Hi everyone at the Serious Play Conference. Welcome to Dublin, Ireland. My name is Linda Donovan. I'm the Head of Pedagogy at the Learnivate Centre based in Trinity College, Dublin. Trinity College is 400 years old. It's the oldest university in Ireland and one of the oldest in the British Isles. It's modelled on Oxford and Cambridge. So now, let's go inside for my presentation. Welcome to Learnivate. The title of my presentation today is Serious Games for Serious Corporate Impact. Learnivate is a technology centre. It's funded by the Irish government. And its mission is to support the growth of Ireland's learning technology industry by partnering academic research with business. So we're at the interface of both and as such we're involved in applied research. In terms of our academic partners, they're based in universities across Ireland and they specialise in various technologies. In terms of our industry partners, they range from K-12 to corporate and they can be categorised in terms of high potential startups, multinational corporations, formal education, e-learning companies and corporate training companies. But for the purposes of today's talk on serious games, I'm going to focus on multinational corporations. And they are Microsoft, Google, Novartis, Intel, BNY Mellon, Thomson Reuters and Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Learnivate's applied research model involves our industry partners coming to us with their challenges. And these challenges typically would be around corporate learning. Um, we analyse those challenges. We look into our toolkit of academic research and technologies and also to the core research we're conducting at Learnivate and we come up with a solution. Depending on the challenges, um, this solution can involve innovative pedagogical models, serious games, adaptive personalised learning, learning analytics, recommender systems, semantic search, or a combination of some or all of them, and other technologies which are available to us through our academic partners. These are some of the key corporate challenges brought to us by our multinational corporations. And they're varied, and we have recruiting the right people. So that's what they want to do, not just anybody, the right people. Uh, developing 21st century skills such as problem solving, critical thinking. Their workforces are not engaging with training. This is a major problem for them. They want to identify and nurture talent within their organisation and they want technology that will help them with workforce planning. A lot of these are around competencies. How do you identify the competencies within your organisation? So we considered their challenges, we analysed them, and we felt that a serious game approach would be perfect to address many of those challenges. Why serious games? Well, serious games would enable us to clearly define learning goals. We'd use the game mechanics to engage learners. The game tasks would be designed to elicit specific indicators of skills, log files to capture data activity with, within the game, um, and gameplay analytics to identify skills, but also to identify skills gaps and to enable workforce planning. So this all gave rise to one of Learnivate's core research projects called iLearn. iLearn is an immersive learning environment it's designed to develop and assess problem solving and collaboration skills. These are key 21st century skills. Embedded in iLearn is a problem solving task and the task is game based to engage learners. Um, there are authentic learning goals. It's designed to elicit indicators of the skills and the skills in question here are collaboration and problem solving. And it provides us with an authentic evaluation scenario. Also integrated into iLearn is Social Search and Recommender. This is one of our partners' technologies. It enables learners to find resources that will help them solve the problem. It also helps uh, learners to recommend resources to their team members, and this is facilitating collaboration. We've also embedded data capture technology within iLearn, and the purpose is that it can capture activity um, relating to collaboration and problem solving. The researchers ourselves have identified what the indicators of those are and the data captures, captures it for us. There are advantages to having 
all of these technologies embedded within the game, it means that we're collecting our data from a number of sources. And this triangulation of data enables us to validate, to stand over our research outcomes, but it also enables us to provide our corporate partners with the hard evidence they need to use serious games for corporate learning. We trialled iLearn with 120 end users. We're currently in the middle of evaluating our data, but so far it looks very promising in terms of user engagement, motivation and task completion. When we finished our evaluation, we'll create a report and it will be available on the Learnovate website. So the potential of serious games for corporate learning is huge. They have application across the employee lifecycle for recruitment, onboarding, performance management and development. So for example, for recruitment, they can be used to attract the right people with the right skill set. For onboarding, they can reduce time to competency. They can be used for performance management, optimise performance and engagement. And for development, they can identify and plug competency gaps. But not only are they relevant to learning and development across the employee lifecycle, they're also relevant to higher level organisational processes such as talent management and human resources. And this isn't widely recognised and it makes them a very, very powerful tool in terms of corporate learning. So in terms of recruitment, serious games can be used for the different stages of recruitment. And if we look here, they can be used for sourcing, screening, assessing and selecting. Here we have an example of some recruitment games. We have Reveal by L'Oreal. It's been used for passive and active recruitment. And it's designed to identify the suitability of players for various roles within the organisation, such as operational roles, finance roles, uh, marketing roles. Another example of a game is Wasabi Waiter. And this was developed by Knack and piloted by Shell. And it's using predictive analytics to identify traits, characteristics, competencies that are very, very difficult to identify at the moment using traditional recruitment tools. OK, so that's recruitment. Let's move on to onboarding. 30% of organisations are facing increasing pressure to come up with innovative onboarding programmes for their employees. And they're increasingly looking to serious games to do this. Here we have um, a company called Mindtickle, and they have an onboarding platform called All Aboard. The idea is that organisations can leverage their existing training content and apply game mechanics to it to make the onboarding experience much more interactive and engaging. Let's move on to a compliance training game. It was created by one of our e-learning industry partners for a global financial services organisation. Um, it's to do with risk management. The clients are telling our partners that the game is very engaging, motivating, and there's great transfer of learning from it. But like so many uh, other serious games that are being used by corporates, the evidence for impact is anecdotal. They're not actually measuring it or they're not using the appropriate metrics to actually measure the impact. So we know it works. We don't know to what extent. So who's using serious games for corporate learning and what are they using it for? So large organisations such as Cisco, IBM, Deloitte are using them. They're using them for various types of business processes such as training, recruitment, marketing, sales. And in terms of training, they're using it for procedural training, rules-based training and also soft skills training. Because of the application across the employee life cycle, these large organisations are using it for recruitment, marketing and sales, new hire orientation, skills training, you name it, they are, are using it for those organisational processes. So in terms of sectors, serious games are being used across finance, business, hospitality, right across the board. They're also being used by both the public and the private sectors. Learnovate has also conducted its own research with its corporate partners. We asked them a number of questions. Uh, we asked them were, were they currently using serious games for training and 20% of them said yes. Now all of the results aren't in so, so these are preliminary results. 
This 20% concurs with a study done by the ASTD and published in March of this year, um, where they surveyed 551 organisations. So 20% of corporates using serious games for training. Similarly, 50% of them are investigating or considering using serious games for training. Once again, this concurs with the ASTD's findings. All of our corporate members were looking for hard evidence uh, of business impact as well as training impact. And the business impact was critical to them to persuade them to move from face-to-face -face training or linear e-learning to more innovative methods of learning, such as through serious games. The reasons for considering serious games was for more engaging training, more effective training, and also increasing requirements for return on investment on training interventions. And because of a perception that serious games are expensive, um, return on investment would be very relevant and important here. We also surveyed our e-learning partners. And the results were quite interesting here. They were seeing an increase in demand for serious games in the last year. The percentage of their clients requesting serious games is about 10%. And the main reasons given for requesting serious games was more effective and more engaging training, particularly for young workforce. And serious games have been requested for all types of training, leadership training, soft skills training, compliance training. So it was interesting to get both angles when we did our survey. Now, not all the results are back. We normally post these results up on our Learnovate website. So in terms of the impact of, of serious games, um, where is the hard evidence that our corporate partners are looking for coming from? Well, the first source is the academic research evidence. So what's this telling us? Various meta-analysis reports are indicating positive impact on learning outcomes, attitudes and motivation, retention and transfer, behaviour change, task completion speed and transfer of learning. And what's interesting here is that the results that are coming through for us with iLearn are supporting and validating um, these results in terms of learning outcomes, attitudes and motivation, transfer of learning, we're seeing the same positive impacts. Other research is around the whole area of spaced learning. So in corporate learning, long term retention is a very important evaluation metric so that people remember what they were trained on. But typically employees forget what they were trained on within a week or two weeks. So they start to forget very, very quickly. So if there's no spaced repetition or distributed learning, they will forget everything they have learned. So it is important to send reminders again and again of what they've actually learned. And it turns out that games are very effective for space learning. And the reason is because they're reinforcing feedback the feedback loops. So the idea is that learners would play the game um, at intervals and this would enable them um, to remember what the training was all about and it would facilitate long-term retention of the learning. So what else is the research telling us? Well, it's cautioning us. It's telling us that if there's an over-reliance on badges and points and leaderboards, that long-term retention is low. It's also telling us that engagement and motivation is not sustained. So this is a flag, a red flag, about overuse of one game mechanic, and that is rewards. There is a detailed report on the research. It will be available after the conference. So that's the research evidence, and it's showing positive impact for serious games. What about the business impact evidence? Something everybody is interested in. Well, it's anecdotal. The metrics that do exist are too granular and they're mainly L&D metrics. They're around course completion, course logon. But what does that really tell us about learning? It doesn't tell us anything. So why is this the case and why is there a lack of business impact evidence for serious games? The reason is because most organisations, when they're defining their strategies at an organisational level, they don't consider L&D objectives. So it's only 
when there's an alignment of talent management, HR and learning and development objectives, the impact of serious gains can be measured. So here we see the alignment of HR, L&D and talent management objectives for recruitment, attracting the right people with the right skill set. If you get the right people with the right skill set, you've got to provide less training interventions. And with onboarding, reducing the time to competency and attrition rates, if they're more engaged, they will stay with the organization. Performance management, optimize performance and engagement. Once again, identify where the skills gaps are and plug them. Succession planning, identify and nurture talent. So through playing the games, we can spot who are the good problem solvers, who are the good collaborators, who are the good critical thinkers. And then for development, monitor workforce competencies. So for example, if organizations want to stay agile, they need to know at any point in time, what are the competencies within their organization and what are the competencies they will need in the future. And serious games provide a vehicle to actually identify those competencies. Realizing the value of serious games to organizations requires re-evaluating the relationship between HR, talent management and learning and development. Okay, so what are the barriers to corporate adoption? Um, we hear lots about them, but let's have a look at what we found from our research. Serious games are still regarded as disruptive innovation. In the minds of L&D and various other people within organisations, learning should not be fun. It must be serious. Integration with legacy learning infrastructures Organisations think that they will have to uh, buy in games engines like Unity 3D and layer it over their existing LMS and that this is difficult, costly, etc. And they also uh, feel that outsourcing development of serious games is very costly. So to move towards serious games as a method of training is just too cumbersome for them. They have a lack of in-house experience. So even if they do layer Unity 3D over their existing LMS, they have a lack of in-house experience of how do you design the games? How do you develop the games? So they would have to go out and look for skills. And there's a skill shortage in terms of finding those people. There's a conflation of gamification and serious games. Even without any research evidence, these people know that novelty wears off and that reward must be commensurate with effort. This is a real problem. There's a perception out there that serious games are all about badges, leaderboards, points. And there's a skill shortage. So to get a really good serious game, you need a combination of skills. Those of an instructional designer and those of a good, a good games developer. There are very, very few people out there with a combination of those skills. So there's a skills shortage. And the idea is that if you have an instructional designer trying to design a game, it will be a clunky game. If you have a games developer, the game will look very, very good, but it will not have the underpinning instructional integrity. So those are the barriers to corporate adoption. And finally then, the Learn Innovate report, this is available on our website. The URL is here. So log on, download the report. There, it's a detailed report. Um, it covers the evidence to support the use of serious games for learning, the types of corporate training that serious games have been used for, and the barriers to corporate adoption of serious games. I thank you for the opportunity of presenting here at the Serious Play conference and I look forward to the question and answer session. Thank you.